Hey there you guys! Today I'm going to show you how to mount a staghorn fern. I've already done two of these. They're doing pretty well. They've been uh, thriving for about three weeks now. Those two I had gotten a couple weeks ago just before I was going to do this project and today I'm going to mount the one that I originally got that I wanted to mount but it was so nice that I didn't want it to be my first one to, to mount so today we're going to be mounting that one. Uh, this one, the one I'm talking about is here. Uh, you can see it has really nice basil leaves. And if you don't know much about staghorn ferns, uh, this is going to be the fertile fronds. So uh, this is where the spores are going to be produced. And then this area down here, these are the basal fronds and these are the non-fertile fronds. And these fronds, um, just anchor the plant to the to whatever it's supposed to be mounted on um, in the wild they actually mount onto trees or other objects and so they're usually hanging like this they're not typically in pots like we see here so I want to create more of an atmosphere or I want to create more of a environment that it has in nature and it looks really cool I saw on Betsy Begonia's house she has a couple that are really cool and kind of inspired me to have a few of my own i'm going to show you the where i'm going to hang them up at i have two of them hung up already and then we're gonna i'm gonna go ahead and show you how i mounted them onto cedar boards along with some moss and soil and how that all works so let's crack into it all right, you guys, this is what I have mounted so far. I have my two ferns that I recently mounted. I had my husband uh, put them up for me, the hooks up for me, because otherwise they wouldn't be spaced evenly or properly. He's more of a perfectionist than I am. I would just throw it up there. So I had him do that. Uh, see what we're going to do just to explain what we have here. So I have my stag fern, fern that is material item number one. Let's go ahead and add that to the list. Next item is going to be a cedar board, which you can see here. Now with the board, it has to be cedar because that is not going to rot. And these, you are going to water and soak them thoroughly once a week. And so it's going to be, it's going to get wet constantly. So we need to make sure it's not going to rot because um, that would be bad. Uh, otherwise, what else do we need? Um, I have some hangers. I'll show you what hangers I used. I have a piece of rope there. I basically chose this hanging method because uh, it matches some of my other decor that I have in this room. Um, you can see, if you look at my posters here, I have them hung up with the same kind of hook and then the natural um natural cotton thing out fabric rope strap i don't know what to call it but i have the essentially the same thing going on with this because i'm trying to be an adult and match things and be classy and decorative whatever anyway i'll show you how i did that and then we have the um moss that wrapped around the root ball and then uh, it is tied on with um, fishing line. You can't really see it because it's clear, which is kind of the point. And we also have screws in here. So I have uh, screws that I mounted, I put it on there. I'll show you how I did that. And I'll show you how I made this. Okie dokie guys, we're gonna get started now. So we're down in my basement, AKA in my potting room or my potting bench. Pro tip, if you're really messy in the kitchen, your husband will eventually build you a potting bench in the basement. Anyway, that was step number one. So step number two is actually uh, getting all the supplies here. Just to point out what I have, I have my cedar board I talked about upstairs. Make sure it is cedar. Uh, this was a, this was a eight, foot board and it is um, eight inches so it's an eight by eight um, board and eight foot by eight inches figure it out anyway um, 
got this from Lowe's, cut it into about foot uh, wide pieces. Um, you can choose whatever size you need to fit your fern. Next part is uh, the hanging uh, hardware that I'm going to use. These were uh, gold triangle hangers, they're called, and then the medium, medium size. Yep. That's what I have. Um, I wanted the gold because it matches my, like I said, my decor. Uh, you don't have to. I, I just, I just do that because I'm. That's the way I am. Uh, next up, I have my uh, screws. So I'm going to use these screws. Um, they are five eight number six screws, and they are zinc. Now make sure you are getting. Uh, zinc or stainless steel because those won't rust and like I mentioned before We don't want or these are going to get wet. We don't want to have rust on our plant or on our boards Not good for the plants not good for the board doesn't look nice um, And eventually it will rot and your fern will fall off. We don't want that to happen Now speaking of the fern that's the that's kind of the main thing that you need is a staghorn fern now, I've seen some people mount other ferns um, that they are um, epiphytes. I'm gonna insert in the actual word because I can't say it. I see, I hear it in my head, but I can't get it to come out of my mouth. Does anyone have that? Have it all the time. Anyway, um, also have fishing line so I'm gonna screw about six of these screws into the board and then I'm going to tie my um, fern with fishing line and moss now I've thoroughly soaked this moss mmm doesn't it look good and hydrated we're gonna wrap the root ball in that uh, I also have just a couple tools here to use so First, I'm going to be using uh, this to trace where I'm going to place the fern on the board. So I just have uh, this terracotta pot um, to use to trace that. I have a hammer. Yeah, we're gonna need that. And then I have a drill. This will help you out a lot and it will make you feel really cool because you're using a power tool. Uh, make sure you have the right size bit for this the <laughs> drill too. Just don't, you know, get a drill or borrow one from someone and then don't get the right size bit for the screws. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be a problem. So make sure you do that. Um, otherwise, oh look, there is a stink bug. I bet that is what is eating a couple of my plants upstairs. Come on, guy. This isn't required. You don't need a stink bug. See him? Isn't he cute? He's adorable. Sorry, bud. You're going to have to go outside. I'll be right back. Alrighty, now that you have ex you have um, escorted your buggy friend outside, we can start this show. So, uh, first off, I'm going to put my hangers on the back of my board. So decide what side of the board do you want to be facing out. And then that's where I'm going to be placing these hangers. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on the uh, back of this board. Okay, um, so before you put them on the back of the board, you want to measure how far you want them to be from each other and where you want them to be placed on the board. So I'm going to do that as well. I need, you're, you're gonna need a measuring tape. I forgot that as one of the tools. Don't forget a measuring tape. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do the best you can. I think we should observe that in every part of our lives. So just, you know, do, do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nope. Freaking tiny ass nails. Ah. All right. 
once you get it looking something like this you know something that you could hang stuff on then you're getting somewhere so next I need to put the screws in but I want to uh, place where I want to mark where the um, it's going to be um, using this terracotta saucer thing you could use round just round things whatever it's gonna work so I'm going to trace this that's another tool that you need that I forgot is a pencil yeah that's handy so I'm just gonna measure this out place it kind of in the middle where I think it's gonna be in the middle again you know it doesn't have to be perfect I just I don't care if it's not perfect and that's what matters it's how you feel about it hey I was pretty dang close eh all right so you know that's gonna be kind of in the center that's that's where I'm gonna place this and I'm going to trace it I'm sorry if I'm annoying those perfectionists out there but you know what I do what I want I'm gonna place one here up here in that circle and and here so I'm just going across um, parallel from each um, from each one and I'm gonna go ahead and drill this this is the fun part because I like I like drilling things. So I'm gonna do this. So now that you have all of your screws in there, I lied, we did eight of them. I can't, I can't do math. Now you'll notice that um, when I screwed them in. I didn't screw them in all the way because I wanted to leave some space to wrap the fishing line around when I get that done. So I don't want to, um, I want to leave a little bit of space there. It'll make it a lot easier. For the first one that I did, I didn't leave enough space on some of them and it was a pain in the butt. So that's why I'm leaving it a little more space on this one to work with. Now, Sorry, it's not perfect. I'm an Aries. All right, next up is this yummy, yummy moss. Now I got the spasm moss, which, uh, where is it? Down here. Oh, sh it's down here. <laughs> I got this from one of the greenhouses in the area. So that's what I'm using. And I soaked it in water and I used um ro water i didn't use tap water um at least at first just to make sure that it doesn't have any chemicals in it that it's going to um, affect the ferns because ferns are very sensitive to that kind of or two chemicals so i wanted to make sure it wasn't starting out with that at least um, i usually do water on my plants with rain water uh you'll see behind me if i show you there are like how many buckets there are currently five five gallon pails full of rainwater that my husband collected for me. Um, he was a little enthusiastic, a little over enthusiastic for that, but I'm not complaining. I got a lot of water now and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna wring out a little bit and I'm gonna place just a good handful, you know, about this much. I'm gonna squeeze out a little bit of the water so it's not soaking and place it on the center of my board where my fern is going to be right there kind of spread it out and squish it down a little bit form kind of a circle and now it's time to get my fern out of its pot and when I do that, I'm just gonna squeeze the outside to loosen up the soil and kind of push it out and wiggle this sucker out of here. And I'm going to remove most of the soil, as much soil as possible. 
So you'll see, just start digging in, get that soil off. Shake it out. It's like you're scratching a dog. All right, so now I got most of the soil off. I have my root ball uh, here, and you can see still have quite a few roots on here, and most of my soil is out. I'm just gonna try to shake out as much as possible. And now we're going to put it onto our mount here. Now, something like that. Uh, you see, he's not gonna stand up. But let me get the soil out of here and then um, come back and show you how I mount that. Alrighty. So now that I have some, most of this cleaned up, it's not perfect. I'm gonna show you how I'm going to mount this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take more of my moss from over here and I'm going to wrap it around the root ball um, as much as possible and kind of get it tucked under the basil root leaves. Make sure you don't have any that are, that any moss over the basil leaves here. Um, so the basil, the basil, sorry. And um, when we mount this, you want to make sure that um, the leaves, the way that it's going to be mounted, you'll see my hangers are up here. I want it to, so the leaf, the first one that I mounted, he, it was, the leaves are all over the place. You'll notice the one up there. And I think maybe it did mount it upside down. I might have to redo it. We'll see how he's doing good so far, but uh, we're gonna see how he turns out. But um, want to make sure that the leaves are pointing down in the back as the leaves are at the top. Um, this is to capture, so in the wild, it's going to capture water down here in the basal leaves. So for the roots and um, for and nutrients for the plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and plop it down here, kinda maneuver it around. And then I'm going to take my moss, again, squeezing some of that out and wrapping it around. So you'll see now have it, um, most of the moss tucked in around this baby. And I'm going to take my fishing line now. I got 50 pound uh, weight fishing line just because I really don't want my plants to fall off the wall because that would be traumatizing. So I, you could get less, but I just got the highest weight possible. And I'm going to do a slip knot and I leave a pretty, I can leave a pretty big tail here at the end. I'm just going to cut that off later, um, but I'm going to go ahead and loop that around one of my first screws, which I can see, well, I can't see it. I, I feel it, it's right here. <laughs> And I have that attached, you can see it is tight on there. Um, and then I'm going to go on, make sure you go under the basil leaves and then kind of cross over to the one that is opposite of it. And I'm just going to keep doing that. And pull it tight and I looped it around twice back here. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to now go kind of across this way and loop it around on this side. Now it might take you a minute to uh, loop it, but just kind of keep going, crisscrossing around to secure it. I go quite a few times because like I said, I don't want my plant to fall off the wall. Traumatizing, love my plants. So 
now I have it all wrapped around. I don't know how many times I went over that a, a lot. I did a lot. Um, but I'm going to strap that one down and then I'm going to do one last cross here and I'm going to do another slip knot. All right. And then I'm going to cross over to my next section. Ah oh, man, I made that slip knot a little too big. Just make the slip knot when you get to where you want to tie it down to. You know, that makes sense. Come here, man. All right. So I'm going to go right here and I'll do my slip knot up here. And I'll tighten it down. It's pretty tight. All right. That looks pretty good. So with that, oh looky there, I forgot another tool you're going to need. You're going to need some scissors. I'm just, I'm going to write an actual list of all the things that you need. <sighs> anyway, let's go ahead. I'm going to cut this tail off. I left a little bit of room there, so if it does need to tighten up, it does have a little bit of wiggle room. Move this guy over, and then this tail that I um, started off with, I'm also going to snip that one. Alrighty, there we go. So we have this guy here. Wow. Isn't he cool? All right, guys. So I have it hung up now. I just used uh, some of this cotton rope that I got from Joann's. It's pretty nice. Um, I used cotton because I thought that it would dry faster than if I got nylon or anything else. So just got cotton. And like I said, I wanted it to match the aesthetic that I have going on in my house. All right, you're, you're just gonna stay there. Next, um, da, 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 we have, ooh, wow, I have my things mounted. So I have my furs mounted here. I have all three of them hung up. And they look pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. So I didn't want to show you me struggling for five minutes to hang it up because I'm really short and I couldn't get it hung all the way up there. How to get a ladder and that would have been embarrassing all right anyways if you guys have any other questions let me know i think i got everything in there um, i will put a list of the items that i used in the description box below um, but otherwise thanks guys i'll see you next time